List columns. In this presentation, I will explore the options of creating a custom list with five columns in it. Please keep in mind that all of the work that I show you with the columns may also be added to any of the out-of-the-box SharePoint templates. It just so happens that I'm going to be working from a custom list to begin with. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm at the proper site. I'm at my Contoso home site and we need to add an app. To do so we go to settings and add an app. Once the list of apps is loaded we are interested in this time a custom list. We are required to give it a name And once the list is, has been created, then it's a matter of opening that list. And I can do so in my recent area over in my quick launch, or I see it right here as the demo list. Both ways equally fine. And before I begin to add the columns or perfect anything else about it, a good habit that I get into is to quickly go to the list, list settings, and then address the proper naming whatever proper name I had chosen to use. In this case, when I go to my list name, description, and navigation, I see demo list, but I really intended on this being demo with a capital D and something such as that. And yes, I would like it to permanently be part of the quick launch menu. We'll go back to the demo list. And I will show you now a couple of ways that you may add new columns. One of these ways to add a new column is to go up to the items themselves. Of course, this would add a new record, a new entry, but we're not quite ready for entries yet. On our list tab, in the Manage Views group, we see a Create Column. This is one way. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. It then loads a form that I must fill out. I will give the column a name. I will call this one Favorite Food. Single line of text will be fine for now. We'll be working with some of these others, but just a brief description about what they can do for you. Let me go over them quickly. A multiple line of text can have multiple lines. It even supports some formatting options that are available. Choice menu to choose from. This allows us to present a list of choices for our, our end users to choose and then they choose what they want. Number, currency, date and time. These all hold number values just specifically formatted in a very particular way. Purpose is, if I can store it as a number, we can come along and do calculations if it's stored as a number. A lookup, this is information already on the site. We'll be demonstrating one of these in a bit. We have a yes, no, this is a Boolean true, false, on, off type field. Person or group. Hyperlink or picture. This will either show up as a blue underlined sort of hyperlink or it will actually show the picture, um, of course, that is tied to the link. Calculated. Calculation based on other columns. This is where we could use a calculated field, for example, to take a number and a currency and or a date and time field and do some mathematical operations with them. We also have a task outcome, external data, and managed metadata. These three are used if you have specific extra features added. They tie into those specific features. Uh, but single line of text was perfectly fine. Additional column settings are going to be unique per data type. In this case, we just say, is it required, yes or no? Must it enforce unique values? In other words, we could never have two people with the same favorite food. Um, if, that were, if that were true, then we would say yes. But typically, we don't need to enforce that unique value. We have a maximum number of characters and, of course, a default value. We'll go ahead and click OK. 
And once it is saved and the screen refreshes itself, we see that I now have a title, which by the way, every list has a title. You may not delete it. You can rename it, although it's a best practice to not rename it. Uh, you can also d decide if it is required or not required, but it is impossible to delete it. It is a field that must exist with every list. And then, of course, our new favorite, food. Well, we have about four other fields to enter, and then once our other fields are in, we'll, we'll, we'll test it out. Another way to create a new column, if I don't choose to use the Create Column shortcut, I can go into the List Settings, and then once the list settings presents itself we scroll down and we see a column area this is where I see all the other columns that are already set up for this particular list if you are adding a new column and it is not a new from scratch list that you're started but instead one that someone else had created it's a good idea to look first before we create but here we do have a create column I'm going to call this one favorite color and then we will put in the type of data this shall be a choice menu to choose from the screen will refresh itself and we will see then that the additional column settings that we scroll down to will have some extra choices here this is where we put the various colors that they shall choose uh, we'll just say blue red, yellow, and displaying those choices as a drop down, a set of radio buttons, which of course would look much like this, or check boxes, which would allow for multiple selections. Multiple selections you must be careful of because certain things later when we work with views these um, check boxes will not lend themselves to all the full potential that we could do within a view. But we'll see that a bit later. We can also allow for a fill in choice. What if they do not have red, blue, or yellow as one of their favorites? Perfectly fine. And then the default value. I tend to like myself personally to leave the default value empty. So I would say yes, it will be a choice but I will leave nothing in there. I will backspace or delete out the data that was in there. And by default it always chose the first one of my options as the quote unquote default. Now the reason I like to leave the default choice empty is that end users, if they get in a hurry, may not really read our questions very well and they may just say, ah, go ahead and whatever the default is, that's what I'll choose. So how would I really know that blue was their favorite or were they just not really willing to fill out the form and you know they just took the shortcut so I like to leave the the field empty therefore if it is empty then I know they did not make a choice right. and we'll click OK we'll now go back to our demo list and I'm going to use the shortcut to create the rest of the columns we need a birth date and this birthday is going to be of course a date and time and once the screen refreshes itself we can scroll down and I can see that we have an option to say the default value may, de may be today's date uh, or maybe it's not it could be a date only or a date and time, but there's not a time only. Uh, but we do have the date only. Uh, standard formatting is fine, it is not required. And I'm going to say that it does not have a default value. But if you choose to, of course, you could always set a default value. So we now have three of the five new columns that I was going to add. The fourth column is going to be still a create a column it is going to be called who and it's going to be a person or group type and if we scroll down to take a look we do have an option to decide what individuals we are pulling in are we pulling in all users or just those users from a specific group 
So we will have choices there. I'm going to say all users. And I would like to show there, and here we have choices, work email. And then I will choose OK. Our fifth and final column is going to be a lookup type. So I need to do a little prep work to make sure that we will um, ultimately have a good source. So we need to go to settings and add an app. As the apps load, this will be another custom list. And I shall give it the name of states. We'll go ahead and click upon the states. And it does need a couple of new columns. Uh, first of all, we can go in and I'm going to create a column. And this column is going to be called abbreviation. This will remain a single line of text, and the only change will be that the maximum number of characters shall be two, and we'll click OK. All right, excellent. So now to put a few sample um, items in, let's go ahead and add a new item. Now, that was easy enough to add a single item, but what if I have multiple items to add? Here's another view that you might find helpful. It's on the List tab, and it's called Quick Edit. And what this will allow you to do is fill in and I'm going to use my Tab key and you uh, fill out all sorts of other states very easily. All right, excellent. So when we're all done filling this out, of course, we can go over and I could go back to my regular view. And sure enough, there are my states under the title with their abbreviations. And so our list now is ready to be used as a lookup source. I'm going to go back to the demo list and we need to, of course, create our fifth and final column. It shall be called home state. And it is going to be a lookup information already on this site. Once the screen refreshes itself, we may scroll down. And I see that it's saying, where would you like to get the information from? Well, I would like to get the information from my states. After I choose states, the screen will refresh itself. And then I have a choice of which title is it, or I should say, should say which column is it that we're wanting to present. And in this case, we are going to present the title. Or I can present the abbreviation and also show additional title columns. Uh, just to help clarify that everything is what it is. And I will simply click OK. And we are now ready to try out a new item. So, uh, title can be anything we need it to be. I'll just go ahead and put my name in there. We may use our tab key after I put my name in to go down to my favorite food. And pick a favorite color. Pick a date to serve as our birthday. And here where we're asked to enter in a name of a who, a person, this has to be someone else that is within our site. We have a uh, test account called Wilbur, or a coworker for the day called Wilbur. So I'll begin to type Wilbur's name in, and then his name appears. And Wilbur's home state is, let's say, Florida. And save. And we now have our new record, our new entry. Now the benefit of using these lookup items like home state and then the home state title is that now I have one list called states. And I use that list to keep all the states we interact with up to date. 
So if we ever need to add a new one, take one away, change the name of something, we have one source to do it with, the states, and then all the many, potentially hundreds of places that we use that state as a lookup source, it will cascade out and update to those hundreds of potential places. So amazing option to think about using those wonderful lookups. Up next, column validation.